day everyone and welcome to another Blender tutorial. In this one we will be doing um, underwater compositing as you can see on the example. Uh, this looks like it's extraordinarily complicated and your node tree does grow a little bit but as you as you'll see as we go through it that it's really not something to be afraid of or intimidated by. You don't have to open the node editor, freak out because it's all gray and then close it again. Uh, it's really not something to be afraid of. So let's get started. Now, as you can see, I already have a basic scene set up. There's nothing fancy about this. Um, the water, for example, is just a plane with um, a cloud texture on it to create foam and water. Uh, the two cloud textures, actually. Um, the mountain range is pretty much just a, a plane that was subdivided and displaced a few times. Also, nothing fancy. And of course, um, textured with um, also procedural textures. So it, it's really, 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 really simple. Uh, you, you can set this up as a test scene for yourself. Um, it's nothing complicated. So when you, uh, what I did though is I gave the ocean a material index. Let me just get that of five, so that it, I can separate it later to get the light beams from the ref reflected um, areas in the um, surface. So, let's get started. So, in your compositor, you will see that you have a basic scene that looks nothing like it's underwater. It just looks like it's a really, 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 really weird cloud setup. So, what I want you to do first, I enlarge this so that I can get that blue over there, but I'm considering changing the blue to more like a green. Uh, the water we're going to be going for is ocean water. Uh, so what I want you to do first is get a mix node, stick it in there between the render layer and your viewer, so that you can um, look at the um, depth information. So just take that out. Um, so you'd stick the Z into image one, and image 2 will be black and you set the blend method to multiply with a factor of 0.995 so that you can see the um, depth information. Okay, now we're going to be doing two things. Number one, we're going to be um, slightly blurring the objects in the distance and we're going to be making them bluer. The further away something gets under water, especially seawater, it tends to look bluer. Uh, for example, you can see that this is not something that requires a lot of depth. If you look at the, um, a pool, for example, even the white walls at the top look blue. It's, it's really not uh, a strange phenomenon. Okay, so we're going to be using this as a mix for our color. So select color and make this blue. I'm going to actually go for a slight greenish tint. Okay, what I also need you to do, sorry, I missed the step, is just to add a color ramp between the two so you have a little bit more control over the um, depth. There we go. Uh, set this to ease. I think we need to increase the white. Yes, increase the black and the white. Something like this will do, I think. So I'm going to bring, oh, there we go, bringing it slightly forward, okay. Now we need to be making this a bluer color. I'm looking for that aqua color, you know. Something along those lines, just make it a little bit darker. Uh, a little bit too green. It reduces the saturation more. Let's go with a more blue color. Something like that will do. If you want to, you can go with that, but that's just crazy. So let's stick with something like this. I think we need to clamp this. Okay, that's good. If you want to, you can Make this slightly stronger, I think we should. Yes, that's more what I was looking for. Okay. 
I just want to increase the black also. Don't want the blue to reach too close to the camera. Okay, that's nice. Excellent. Now we have our color in. I want you to take a blur node. Say fast Gaussian. And set it to 0.5. Like you can see over there. And I need you to take a mix node. Take the color output and set it to 0.5, so you have a slight blur. And now we're going to be taking this and mixing it in with a sharp version over here using our depth info. So we can see we have a fuzzy background and a sharp foreground. Okay, that is absolutely stunning. And now we also need to mist this out so that not only does this get smoother, but this gets more faded. Um, going to be neat. No, let's let's try that. Let's try this color ramp and see if we can. Oh dear, get this working right. I have no idea why I just did that. Okay, um, <laughs> we need this input over here, and we need the blue from over there. Can I see this is too strong? I don't want it to be like that super strong. So I'm going to duplicate the color ramp. No, there we go. Uh, the black is not the problem, the white is... Don't want it to go too far. Let's try piece spleen instead. So we can just get a slight blue tint. Something like that will do. I think we can stand to make this a little darker. No, not that one. The white needs to come forward. There we go. Okay, that looks nice. If you want to, you can take it down more. Let's go with something like that for now. Okay. Let's see. Okay, now we want our brightness values to stand out more. So what we're going to be doing is taking another color ramp. And we're going to be increasing the contrast of the image so that these caustic lines are added using a simple sun lamp will stand out more. Something like that will do. Okay. So let's go color mix. No, not color mix. That's the wrong one. Actually, we do. Yes, color mix. But we need to add a blur node in between. So uh, filter blur. Fast Gaussian. Relative Y. Make it one. Let's see what that looks like. That'll do. And we're going to be adding this over our image. So I want that on full blast with the add on the bottom. And I want it slightly yellow. And I mean very slightly yellow. I just want a slightly warm color to the render. Oh, something like that would look nice. I think we need to blur it to two instead of just one. Okay, that's nice. Okay, that's good. Let's add another blur node. This time we're going to be using it to just soften the whole image. So you're going to be setting this to about one. Let's make it two instead. See what we get. And mix that over. I think one may be a better option in this case. So we make it a little nice and sharp while still having a nice softness to it. That looks good. Okay, now we need to add a slight 
um, beam that comes down from these bright parts of the water. So like I said earlier, I already added a material index to get rid of the um, the rocks. So if you were to look at this and making one of these black, oh, just give me a second, and you were to give this an output, you will see that is black. So in order to get that color, we input, where's that output that we just had? Ah, there it is. And stick that in the black and make this black over there. Just need to fix that. And also need to color ramp this, otherwise it's too intense. I think we need to take this one. No, not that one. This one instead. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to isolate these areas over here. You don't want this, you want these. So if you want to, you can use the depth to cancel this out. We may do that. Let's just see if we can get by without doing that. Just want that very sharp. Okay, let's see how far we can go. Ah, we're going to need depth. Okay, that's fine, can handle that. So let's get our depth information over here. No, I said our depth information over here. This needs to be black, thank you. Let's go something like that. That looks nice. Okay. Okay, go filter, add sunbeams. Let's give it a good ray length so we can at least see what they look like. Obviously we are going to need to add it add this over itself just to make it brighter. Let's set a value like five. Okay, that's nice. Up the Y value so the beams are from there down. You don't want it to be too high, and you don't want the beam length to be too long. So definitely want this higher, so that the beams point almost straight down. Almost straight down. That looks very nice. Now you can add a little bit more length if you want. And give this a very slight blur, just to soften these beams at the front. Again, fast Gaussian, about 1 or 0.5 will do. I think in this case we'll be using 0.5. Yeah, we'll be using 0.5. <coughs> now go color, mix. Actually, this one needs to be at the bottom since we are adding it. And just want to get rid of that. Let's just add a color ramp so we can just, we can give the um, beams a slight yellow. Very slight yellow. Okay, that's nice. And let's just, just reduce that. So that it's like, like that. Just want to make the ray length a bit longer. Okay, and the blur a bit stronger. That gives us a nice look. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now what we need to do is we need to add the, the chromatic aberration that you get when you are underwater. Uh, usually it's not very strong, so we're not going to be trying to make it super strong. What I need you to do is I want you to go into converter and add a separate RGBA and a combined RGBA. Now RGB is simply the um, color channels that an image is built out of um, so that the computer can understand how to um, send what to what pixel on the screen, part of the pixel at least, um, without getting into too much information. Um, 
We're simply going to be separating these channels by a slight distance to create that chromatic aberration effect. So set both to relative, set this one to 0.001 and this one to minus 0.001. That means the red goes this way and the blue goes that way. And the green stays square in the middle. And I'm going to show you the effect it has in a second. I just need to get the original input again. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in for you guys. Okay, now this is when the effect is turned off. This is when it's on. Hold on, there we go. You see? Gives us that slight aberration effect. Now if you want to reverse this, you can make this 1.01 and this one minus 0.01. It's Totally up to you. Uh, I prefer it this way, it's just the way I do it. Let's set this one back to 0.75. And in the center so we can see it. And one more thing we want to do is we just want to add another blur over the total. and go color mix so we can just turn that way down something like that should do the trick and that's basically it um, now if you want to you can add a vignette and all sorts of other stuff um, and use it for your own projects I hope this helps you have a great day and God bless